So we really just want to monitor eel migration. American eel is one of those species that it's not necessarily threatened or endangered, but it's kind of one of those ones where it's been in decline. And since there really isn't a whole lot of data about eel migration, it's part of the reason why we really want to actually do some of this research, just to get some of that data. And especially since we've been doing it a couple years, we'll have that long-term data set. So this is our eel collector. So the way that this works is this is um, polypropylene rope that's been frayed and then it's attached on the bottom to a plastic plate. This mimics eelgrass, so this is actually made by our amazing volunteers who will sit and kind of, uh, you know, fray this rope for us and then we put it together and make an eel collector out of it. So without our volunteers, this would not be possible. So right now what we're doing is we've retrieved this eel collector from the water and now we're placing it in a bucket of water and shaking it out to see if we have any eels in it. And then once we've done that, we're going to strain the water through our sieve. Because we did get some eels, we're just gonna put them into this bucket. So right now, um, all these baby eels that you see going in are um, glass eels. So these are fairly young eels and what we're doing right now is putting them into this bucket which we're taking back to lab and then once we're there we will put them under anesthesia and then we will take a look at the pigmentation that runs along their back and that will give us a better indication of how old they are. I'm just separating these guys into glass eels and non-glass eels because I don't want to dry them all together. Like this guy is um, what's called an elver. He's not a glass eel anymore, you can see he's pigmented. He's what they'll look like when they're adults, um, but he's still, he's still a juvenile, he's still a baby. I don't know if anybody knows this about eels, but they are true fish. So they have a uh, dorsal fin. They actually do have little pectoral fins by their gills. And then these are glass. So slimy. So they're pretty cool because they do have scales, but they've also got this slime coating on them which on the one hand makes it really hard to actually grab them, but on the other hand it helps them when they're um, migrating because then they can travel over rocks and dams and even just wet grass getting to the next body of water. Before they made it here, they actually swam all the way from the Sargasso Sea. They're American eels. American eels are catagermous, so they start their life cycle in salt water, then they make their way to fresher water, and then they make their way back out to salt water to again lay their eggs. There's some that'll stick around Barnegat Bay for a while, and like during the summer when we do our staining, we'll catch a couple big guys, you know. um, but otherwise they'll want to travel as far upstream until they find somewhere that they want to stick around. So this is called Finquil. It's just a sedative for fish and amphibians, anything else that lives in water. I'm just going to dose the water, they'll freak out a little bit, but it's just going to knock them out so that they're not wriggling all over the place whenever I'm trying to look at them under a microscope. So here looking at them under the microscope you can see why they're called glass eels. Their skin is transparent, so these are their hearts beating. There's their gills, that's their spinal column, you can see their stomach. So what we measure is, you see these spots here that's beginning to um, form pigmentation on their skin. Like this guy down here hardly has any, this one has more. So we'll stage them based on how far down that pigment starts to travel. We'll measure their length, we'll check their age and health. 11.15. 122. 64. So we begin looking at this migration of juvenile eels starting in cold, cold February and wrapping it up in late spring. We've got another um, juvenile bluegill here. We want to observe just how these young eels are making their way up into the watershed. It kind of just helps us to establish a baseline for general population questions like how many eels do we see? Um, are there more or less than last year? 
where are they and like are some streams and waterways more accessible to them than other ones and also just how long it takes them to get there like when do we actually start seeing them and how long will they keep continuing to migrate into the spring so getting answers to some of these questions it's really going to help us better understand what is happening with the eel population, why in many cases it's been in decline, and it will also help us to get some answers for how we can correct it and how we can continue to protect this population in the future. So after they wake back up, we'll release them back into the streams where we found them. Alright, bye guys!